In this video, we'll start by asking the following question. You are standing on the skateboard initially at rest, as shown in the picture here. A friend throws a very heavy ball towards you, and you have two choices. You can either catch the heavy ball or throw it backward to your friend. What should you do if you want to minimize your speed on the skateboard? Should you A, catch the ball, B, throw the ball back, or C, your final speed on the skateboard will be the same in both cases. So as usual, please just hit pause, try to think about this on your own, and when you're ready, just come back. All right, hope you have your answer. So we will look at it together now. In this type of scenario, often we want to approach things in terms of forces, but the problem here is that we have no idea what's going on between the fo for the force between the ball and the person while the person is catching the ball. So we need to use something else. Luckily for us, there are conservation laws in physics that can be very powerful in these type of situation. In here, probably you should recognize that momentum is probably the best way to go. So the first thing we need to do when we get started is to check the conditions under which momentum is conserved. And the conditions to conserve momentum are actually fairly simple is just that we need to have that the sum of the external forces acting on the system is equal to zero. In this case, you have to identify your system. The system, best way to, think, to describe it probably in this case is to think about it as both the ball and the skater. So that's your system. And you can see that the sum of the external forces, well, the only one that is not zero, that is not adding up, there's actually the force of gravity that is acting on the ball as it's moving forward. But that is probably very small compared to the other forces, plus it's a force that is acting on the vertical axis while the object will be moving horizontally. So in here, it's not quite true that it's zero, but it's close enough. And because it's close enough, we can claim that, yes, we can use conservation of momentum to study the problem. So let's compare the two cases. So we'll do case A on the left and case B on the right. And the good idea or a good habit to take whenever you're looking at momentum and collision questions is to think of this as a before and after picture. So in both cases, the before kick picture will be the same. We have the ball that is traveling towards the skater, which will be represented with a square in here, and the skater is initially at rest. The after picture in the first case is that the skater is actually catching the ball. So the two objects will be moving together after the collision. While in the second case, the before picture is indeed the same, so we'll have again the ball moving, the skater that is initially at rest, and the after picture will be different this time, because after the collision, we still have the skater that will be moving to the right of the picture, however the ball will be moving towards the left. That's the big difference. So if we say that the ball is B and the skater is S, we can then use something analogous to energy bar charts, which is the equivalent but for momentum. So here I detail the total momentum, which is the combined momentum of the ball and of the skater. And then we have the momentum initially has to be the same as the momentum after the collision or in the year after the ball is caught or thrown back. Initially, there's no momentum for the skater. So this will be zero. And we know that there's some positive momentum for the ball. We know it's positive because it's pointing right. So here we're assuming that right is positive. And let's say that there's four units of momentum in there. After the collision, we know that both the ball and the skater are moving to the right as well. So both will have positive momentum. Since the skater is heavier than the ball, we expect that its momentum will actually be greater because they are both moving with the same speed since they are moving together. So we could say maybe one unit for the momentum of the ball and three units for the momentum of the skater. This one is maybe a little bit too big. Let me just make it a little bit smaller. So 
in total, we still have the same four units of momentum distributed such that the skater has three and the ball would have one. In case B, things are very similar. So we can start again with the same chart that we just used. And what I want to do is to restart with the exact same quantities for the initial because it is the same situation. So we have four units of momentum for the ball initially. The big change is what's going on after. So the ball is bouncing back. So the ball after the collision is moving to the left. So the momentum of the ball after will be negative. I don't know how large it will be, but I do know that it's negative. Maybe the speed is not quite the same. So maybe the ball has a momentum of minus three units in here. But what we do know is that if we want the equality to stand to have the same amount of momentum on the x-axis before and after, then this means that the skater's momentum after the ball is thrown back will have to be the four units of momentum that we had initially. And if we want things to add up correctly, we also need to account for these three. So we have an additional three units here for seven units total in this one so that we can clearly see that the momentum of the skater will be larger in the second case because the ball will now have negative momentum. So the change in momentum will be greater for the ball, which means that to compensate, the change in momentum of the skater will also be greater and the skater will end up with a bigger speed. So if our goal is to minimize the speed of the person on the skateboard, then the best option is to catch the ball. So let's put some numerical value on this. So same situation, but now we have a 30 kilogram kid standing on a skateboard initially at rest. A friend throws her a three kilogram ball at the speed of eight meters per second. Let's calculate the speed of the kid if A, she catches the heavy ball, or B, she throws it back toward her friend at the speed of six meters per second. So I hope you see that there's huge similarity with what we just did. So we know that we will use conservation momentum and actually the before and after picture as well as the, the charts or for the, the bar chart for the momentum will be the same as before. So I'll just take these and copy it over. So I remind you that the momentum of an object is just equal to its mass times its velocity. So here we're just going to use this. So we have the mass of the ball, which is just three kilograms times the velocity of the ball initially, which is eight meters per second, plus mass of the skater times its velocity. So we know that this will just be zero, will be equal to the uh, object at the end. So we have the mass, which will now be 30 kilograms times the velocity at the end. So I'll call this V final A. And that actually is the unknown that we are looking for. So once we have this, we can just divide by the mass and we get the value. However, this is not quite the right answer because I tricked you in some way. That's a classic mistake that students are doing. It's not true that the mass at the end will be the 30 kilogram because remember the picture, we have the ball that is moving with the skater. So actually what we need to use in here will be the mass of the skater true plus the mass of the ball and both will be combined together and will be moving at the velocity that we're looking for. So in the end, we have that the final velocity for case A will just be equal to three times eight, so 24 kilogram meters per second divided by the total mass after the collision, which is 20, 33 kilogram. And once we do the math, we will get 0 0.72 seven meters per second for the velocity of the skater. All right, case B now. So if we look at case B, very similar. So we start with the same in the same way. So we will still have the three kilogram ball moving at eight meters per second plus zero for the momentum of the skater will be equal to, and that's where it's different. We still have the mass of the ball three kilogram, but now we have to multiply by its speed on the x-axis, and this one will be negative, so we'll have minus six meters per second, plus the mass of the skater, 
30 kilogram times the final velocity for object for case B. Oops, we have a problem because B now stands for the ball and for case B. So let me just, if you allow me to make it a little bit weird, but we'll call this one case two actually. And we will replace here with VF2 as well. Sorry about that. So afterwards, it's just doing the calculation. So we'll have in here 24 kilograms meters per seconds is equal to on this side we'll have minus three times six which is 18 kilograms meters per seconds plus the 30 kilogram the mass of the skater times the final velocity of case two and we can find that the final velocity of case two once we do the math will just be equal to 1.4 meters per second so indeed just as we expected the first case, the speed of the skater will be smaller because the change of momentum of the ball is smaller in case A than it is in case 2. Thanks.